With the new HBO series, seems like a good time to look at Watchmen, the movie adaptation of a comic book that tried to show superheroes in the real world, and compare it to its closest Marvel counterpart, Kick-Ass, the movie adaptation of a comic book that tried to show superheroes in the real world. Somehow, very similar ideas, the writers took these two stories in very different directions. And before you comment that Kick-Ass isn't Marvel, Kick-Ass is published by Icon, which is simply a branch of Marvel that allows creators to own their own creations. So Mark Millar owns the rights to Kick-Ass, but the comic book was very much published by Marvel. Now let us never speak of it again. In Kick-Ass, we get the titular Kick-Ass as played by Aaron Johnson. I have had mixed feelings about Johnson as an actor. He was really very bland in 2014's Godzilla. He was pretty good in Avengers Age of Ultron, and he was fantastic here. You'd rather die for some piece of shit that you don't even fucking know? The three assholes laying into one guy where everybody else watches, and you want to know what's wrong with me? Yeah, I'd rather die. To bring it on! So really, he's just all over the place. Here, he is just a nerd who likes superheroes and tries to be one and gets nearly murdered, which damages his nerves and gives him an odd collection of metal parts in his body, meaning he can take one hell of a beating. So wanting to be a superhero made him one, if you count the ability to get beat up as a superpower. He should call himself Ass Kick instead. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. He plays the part well. He is totally believable as a nerd, despite not having a nerd's physique at all. And is believable again as they completely over his head kick ass. What hurts him is after he starts establishing himself as kick ass, he becomes more of a helping hand in the real story. He no longer drives narrative, but becomes just a tool for Big Daddy and Frank D'Amico's feud. Usually in this category, I can count on it being a team versus team or solo movie versus solo movie. This comparison doesn't follow that logic. It doesn't seem fair to pit kick ass against every single watchman, so there has to be one that stands out in particular. In fact, there is one that stands out fairly prominently. And all the whores and politicians will look up and shout, Save us. And I'll whisper, No. So the hero of Watchmen is Rorschach, as played by Jackie Earl Haley. Perhaps the easiest way to see the different approaches these two stories take with their premise is by looking at these heroes. Kick-Ass is a hero because he likes superheroes and would like to be one. Rorschach is a superhero because he's crazy. He is, in many ways, functionally insane. It's very possible that his superheroing is part of what he does to keep himself functional. He is the only Watchman to never give up the superhero lifestyle, continuing to walk the streets, looking for evildoers, long after the government made being a superhero illegal. Those were great times, huh, Rorschach? What happened? You quit. He has rigid beliefs that are largely backwards and very conservative, frequently leading him to incorrect conclusions. Meeting with Dryberg left bad taste in mouth. A flabby failure who sits whimpering in his basement. Why are so few of us left active, healthy, and without personality disorders? Silhouette, murdered. A victim of her own indecent lifestyle. Yet, it's also these rigid beliefs that lead him to drop me off his journal at a newspaper before going to what he assumes may very well be a suicide mission. In a way, it's rather funny. The villain's master plan was already in place. So when he is confronted by Rorschach and Night Owl, his plan is already unstoppable. Do you seriously think I'd explain my masterstroke to you if there were even the slightest possibility you could affect the outcome? He is too smart to give them the chance to stop it. Yet, also by this point, Rorschach had already dropped off his journal. By the time he's bragging about his master plan, it had already been revealed and doomed to fail. His genius leads him to immoral acts, while Rorschach's insanity leads him to moral acts. 
There is a raw insanity to the world that Watchmen revels in, and that Rorschach is a rather great avatar for, even if you sometimes want to punch him. I like both, but surprisingly, even though it is in large ways an ensemble, Rorschach drives the narrative of Watchmen fairly consistently throughout. While Johnson does a great job, Haley is just the next level of his performance. This is a point that has to go to Watchmen. What do you seem to understand? I'm not locked in here with you. I just said... <laughs> You're locked in here with me! Watchmen has so much of Zack Snyder's visual style infused into it. However, since he was extremely faithful to the comic book and almost certainly even used large parts of it to storyboard this movie, we end up with Zack Snyder's visual style controlled. It's the best of both worlds. Snyder is truly a great visual director. However, he can very easily lose track of the movie in his visuals when he has too much story control. But here, he seems largely interested in being true to the source material. There are little changes that baffle me. One being how Silk Spectre and Night Out easily break bones when fighting thugs without any gear. This implies they somehow have superpowers instead of just being extremely skilled fighters. We also have far more glowing blue penis in this movie than the comic book ever did. These are the only two real visual divergences Snyder takes from the comic books. It shows, but outside of those, he keeps control of his usual tendencies to go for the cool shot without any story behind it. This is definitely a movie where Zack Snyder really showed what a great director he can be and how talented he can be with his visuals if he doesn't go too far with them and let them dominate the film. Matthew Vaughn is a very solid director and knows how to tell a clear story. However, his visuals are typically his weakness. Some of the choices he signed off on in X-Men First Class show that very clearly. This isn't to say it's necessarily a bad thing, but lacking. I will say this, the excessive over-the-top injuries seen here are very clearly intentional and part of the absurd universe Vaughn points this movie towards as it progresses. This honestly isn't that close. A simple question I ask myself with this category is which movie would I rather watch on mute? There is no contest. While Snyder's visuals may be a bit misdirected at times, they are always a wonder to see. This is an easy point for Watchmen. Oh my god. I'm on Mars. Kick-Ass has Chloe Grace Moretz as Hit-Girl, Nicolas Cage as Big Daddy, Christopher Mintz Plaze as Red Mist, Lindsay Fonseca as Katie Domo, Evan Peters as Todd, Clark Duke as Marty, and Michael Rispoli as Big Joe. It's a rather amazing supporting cast that frequently steal the spotlight from Kick-Ass himself. Mintz Plaze works amazingly well to counter to Kick-Ass, both being very similar characters with drives to do very different things. Kick-Ass wants to be a superhero largely because he thinks it sounds cool, but also to help people. Red Mist is a character created by Chris D'Amico in an attempt to prove himself to his dad. One wants to do the right things for selfless reasons and because he thinks it seems pretty cool. The other wants to do wrong things for selfish reasons. You really want to be a part of my business? Yeah. Then sit down, shut up, and watch. Katie exists as a joke pretty much until they actually get into a relationship when she then acts as the voice of reason trying to get him to stop going out and being kick-ass. This is despite the fact that being kick-ass indirectly and directly is what got him her attention. But whatever. Evan and Marty are largely just kick-ass's friends. They are fun to have around but don't really contribute much besides giving us a complete Quicksilver crossover that we've all been wanting. Big Joe also isn't a very major character and is there to give Frank someone to talk to, but Rispoli really does a memorable job and makes the character feel more significant than he actually is. It's, it's everything I need, and you might have to screw someone over, like Louie or something. Louie, oh, hey, Chris. Oh. Tony. Tony. Tony? I hate Tony. Hey, fuck Tony, he's a scumbag. That leaves us with the serious standouts, Big Daddy and Hit Curl. This is the role that introduced the world to Moretz who was merely 13 when the movie was released. It's at first off-putting to see someone so young committing murder and cursing so bad a sailor would be offended. Okay, you Let's see what you can do now. I said runt. But she really sells the character so quickly you find yourself buying it. Cage is phenomenal as Big Daddy, Hit Girl's father, and one with a very twisted sense of how to raise a child. But it's really no more painful than a punch in the chest. Why are you getting punched in the chest? You're gonna be fine, baby doll. 
he loves her very much, but is clearly more interested in revenge than actually giving his daughter a real life. Watchmen has Billy Crudup as Dr. Manhattan, Jeffrey Dean Morgan as the comedian, Malin Ackerman as Silk Spectre, Patrick Wilson as Night Owl, Carla Jugina as the original Silk Spectre, and Matt Frewer as Moloch. This is an amazing supporting cast. All very different and scarred heroes. Since Watchmen is an ensemble, Rorschach's claim to the main hero spot is very slim since almost all these characters get their own origin. The actors are all amazing as well. Crudup is great as the dry, emotionless, and often pantsless Dr. Manhattan. She bursts into angry tears, asking if it's because she's getting older. It's true. She's aging more noticeably every day. Morgan is borderline psychotic as the comedian. There's nothing to talk about. See, I'm leaving. I'm gonna forget about you and your horrible, sweaty little piece of shit country. Wilson and Ackerman bring almost an innocence to the story as they are the most noble of the heroes and also the least scarred. The only true supporting characters are Moloch and the original Silk Spectre, who both play key roles in pushing everyone else's story forward. These are two amazing cast. Hit Girl and Big Daddy are so great in Kick-Ass, it makes a strong case for them to get the win. Yet the Watchmen characters have a level of realism that nothing in Kick-Ass can approach. Part of what makes Big Daddy and Hit Girl work is how they are the closest to superhero elements in a world that really doesn't have superheroes. Yet Watchmen has real superhero and actually deals with the repercussions of having an extremely powerful superhero in existence. This one is so close, and honestly both deserve the point. But since a tie makes this whole series pointless, the point has to go to Watchmen. What happened to the American dream? What happened to the American dream? It came true! You're looking at it. The sound design for Watchmen is fairly standard fare, with one big exception being the sounds for Dr. Manhattan. The movie also features great and creative use of licensed music that throughout help put you in the right time period in this alternate universe. The weaknesses of the sounds come from the score by Tyler Bates. Here, let me play a segment. It is cool sounding guitar heavy score like metal merge with a traditional score. Now, where in the movie does that play? Is it a character's theme or the music for a big moment? Hell, can you even replay that music in your head? It's music that sounds awesome when it's on, yet has no impact. It's the imagined dragons of movie music. What's the point of having a score if it's not going to have an impact? No Country for Old Men has no score, and adding a score would only lessen that movie. Kick-Ass has fine sound design and licensed music. It's not as strong as Watchmen, but works in the movie. Where there is a serious divergence between these two movies sound quality wise is in the score. Henry Jackman does the score for Kick-Ass, and it has an instantly memorable main theme. It's the score that is really the straw that breaks the camel's back here. Watchmen is better in all other ways in sounds, but Kick-Ass is solid too, and that Watchmen score it's just so nowhere. Point for kick ass. Kick ass is shooting for a superhero dark comedy. Dark comedy is notoriously a tough genre to pull off. You go too silly, and it just doesn't sync with the dark tone of the movie. You go too serious, and the thing comes off as a pointless story going dark for the sake of going dark. This is one of the few exceptions that works. And I'll have an icy. Mixed. Like when they mix the red one and the blue one. And a pack of Twizzlers. The movie starts fairly realistic and just dives further and further into the absurd as it progresses until we get to a completely insane machine gun jetpack. Still, it's clearly what this movie is going for. 
and it works. Watchmen, for the most part, seems to be what it wants to be. Yet those little elements that were clearly Snyder's influence that he added that I brought up earlier do manage to distract from the presentation of the movie. Why break the rules of your own universe just to infuse stuff that looks cool? Overall, this is a big negative for Watchmen, but it does show some divergence between the story that is and the influence Snyder has on the piece. It's clear that Snyder largely just followed the comic book while Vaughn had a very clear idea what his movie was and went for it. This is a point for Kick-Ass. Thanks, Kick-Ass. My daddy... He would have been proud of both of us. In Watchmen, we get Matthew Good as Adrian Veidt. And one of the biggest flaws with this movie is how he is clearly the villain throughout the whole thing. He acts like a villain even when he's supposed to be acting like a hero. With a group this size, it seems like a publicity stunt. Not in it for the ink. We can do so much more. We can save this world. And it's really a disservice to the character. After all, he does dread the idea of the mass murder he will commit. I've made myself feel every day. See every innocent face I've murdered to save humanity. He does completely believe that he's in the right, that his plan will save the world. Killing millions. To save billions. A necessary crime. It's weird because Matthew Good is a very talented actor. He is more than capable of playing the role as a much nicer and well-to-do character as he's portrayed in the comic book. The movie also suffers because we never get his backstory. Being a movie, they end up having to cut some stuff from the 12-issue limited series, and because of that, not all the origin stories may end. Every origin in the comic book held a piece of the main story, and only once all those pieces come together did we learn who the villain was and get his story. Missing his story is a huge disservice, yet the movie is already three hours long. It's a lose-lose. And while the sacrifice of his origin might be better for the flow of the movie, it is not better for the villain. In Kick-Ass, we get Mark Strong as Frank D'Amico, his first time in a comic book movie and far from his last. It's not a particularly complex role. He's the big mob boss that framed Big Daddy. Strong is great in the role as he always is. Hey, Kick-Ass, how you doing? Kill my men, huh? Overall, Frank is an effective villain even though he's fairly simple. This is where it gets interesting because neither is a really layered character. Fight is actually far more complex, but the movie simplifies him entirely too much. It was actually a surprising twist in the comic book when he was revealed as the main villain. In the movie, it was just blatant if you remembered him at all. Frank, on the other hand, is exactly what he should be and fills out the role of a fairly cliche villain fairly well. One should be complex but is simple. The other is simple and is portrayed as simple. This is an easy point for kick-ass. Mommy, I want a kick-ass party. Dumb little fucks. This is really rather amazing. I cannot think of two movies with a more similar basic premise, yet take the premise in drastically different directions. Watchmen takes its idea of what if there were superheroes in the real world and infuses it into the history of the world, seeing its influence on politics and war. They are used to bring a swift end to the Vietnam War. The comedian is seen doing shady work for the government. Nixon is seen as a president winning many terms past his limit. The movie also explores the ideas of personal responsibility versus responsibility to the world. Never compromise. Not even in the face of Armageddon. Adrian kills millions because he's convinced it will save billions and that the end justifies the means. Rorschach thinks that certain activities are downright inexcusable. His ideology is very screwed up and that he clearly has an issue with homosexual behavior and thinks that when gay people die, it's because of their lifestyle, which is beyond messed up. But he also believes that little things like mass genocide are wrong without any exception. There's an expression, you cannot see the forest for the trees. If you're familiar with the Myers-Briggs person, personality test. This is a major component of one of the letters you may get in your assessment. Some people are identified as sensing. The main feature of this type is that you are focused far more on details than on the overall picture. The other side of that is the intuitive personality type. 
These people focus on the end goal rather than the details. Clearly, we see how Rorschach and Adrian are at opposing viewpoints here. Adrian is very much an intuitive type, focused on the good of the forest as a whole, even if it means losing some trees. Rorschach is a sensing type, only caring for the trees. There is a logic to both, and the movie shows how neither is correct when taken to their absurdist conclusion. You see how this influences their lives. Adrian made a fortune going for his big goals. Rorschach never focused on Hugh's goals and merely looked to the current mystery or mission. Most of the characters fall into the middle of the spectrum except these two. But it is the divergence of these two characters' worldviews that allows a fairly insane person like Rorschach to recognize how clearly immoral Adrian's plan is. Kick-Ass, on the other hand, takes its premise and focuses on the dark comedy and hyperviolence of the situation. Kick-Ass is one of the more sane characters who decides to put on a costume and enter a fairly insane world. The other superheroes being Big Daddy and Hit Girl are both psychopaths. Though it's tough to blame Hit Girl too much because it's what the daddy raised her to be. Frank D'Amico is also a psycho, yet perhaps strangely enough, perhaps less crazy than Big Daddy? Of course, he is a crime lord that kills fairly indiscriminately for money. For the most part, Kick-Ass is the audience viewpoint character. At first, we follow him as he decides to take on a superhero lifestyle, but then we get thrown into the plot's driving story, which is a feud between Frank and Big Daddy. While the story of Kick-Ass is a fairly standard revenge yarn, it also is able to pull off the tricky bouncing act of being a dark comedy and a fairly straightforward superhero story all at once. Big Daddy's death is fairly predictable, yet you are involved enough with the characters to not want to see it happen. Kick-Ass is a really fun movie, but rather than thoroughly explore what it means to be a superhero in the real world, it just focuses more on jokes and extreme violence. It works very well, yet it doesn't make for a great story, which is very much something that Watchmen has. It would be wrong of me to finish this section without addressing the giant outer space squid in the room. In the comic book, the squid never worked. It just felt so out of nowhere. Dr. Manhattan's frame job has issues with how closely tidy is with America, but flows in the narrative far more naturally than the squid did in the comic book. Yes, the comic book is better overall, but in this one aspect, the movie is better. Back to the comparison, Watchmen is just a much more well thought out piece. Sure, Kick-Ass is meant to be more fun, but we are looking at raw story and Watchmen has easily the better story of the two. Suddenly you discover humanity. This is a fascinating comparison. Watchmen is a movie with a very mixed reaction. Opinions on the movie run the gamut. Kick-Ass, on the other hand, is largely just a very well-liked film that most everyone agrees is fairly awesome. My personal opinion agrees with the general consensus on Kick-Ass. However, I think Watchmen is one of the most underrated movies ever and arguably one of the best comic book movies ever made. I love the graphic novel and I love this movie. I don't really miss the Black Freighter story in the director's cut, however, I would like to see proper origins for Adrian, Night Owl, and Silk Spectre. Watchmen is in many ways an example of how great a filmmaker Zack Snyder can be when he is reined in. He really doesn't seem to have a strong grasp of how to write a good story or use your camera to really enhance your story. He has little to no understanding of characters and how they should work within a narrative. But when he follows someone else's script and storyboards, he can really do some amazing and creative stuff that looks simply amazing. Zack Snyder is not a bad director at all. He's actually a fantastic director. His weakness is completely with his writing. Make him follow a strict story and you can get something really great. Have him do his own thing and you get something really terrible. Watchmen is an example of Snyder at his best. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't be. Pain don't hurt. 